Well, welcome to this first lecture for Physical Chemistry, Chem 2214 and Chem 2304. In this first lecture, we're going to talk about work and the first law of thermodynamics. First of all, you probably remember from last year the definition of energy. Energy is defined as the ability to do work. And in chemistry, thermodynamics, thermo meaning energy or heat, and dynamics meaning movement, is the study of the transfer of energy. Energy can be transferred in two ways, by heat and by work. And in the first four or five lectures, we're going to be talking about energy transfer by heat, and in this lecture, energy transfer by work. The units of energy are uh, Joule, after James Joule. Um, you probably know the old unit of energy, calorie. You see that in the back of food packets. Um, so sometimes you see energy in calories, sometimes you see energy in joules, but the SI energy, SI unit for energy is joule. Okay, so we're talking about transfer of energy. So we might have a chemical reaction where energy is given off, in other words, heat might be given off, or a chemical reaction where energy is required. For example, we might have to apply pressure or heat it up to make it go. And in general, for any system, in other words, something that we are studying, that's the system, we can add energy from to the system, from the surroundings. In this case, the energy of the system will increase. Or we can take energy away from the system and put it into the surroundings. So, for example, a reaction might give off heat. In this case, the energy of the system decreases. Now, a system can be anything. It can be something as simple as a chemical reaction. It can be something more complex, like the human body, or even more complex again, like a lake or um, a piece of the atmosphere or whatever and the surroundings is everything else apart from the system so in thermodynamics when we talk about transfer of energy we mean transferring energy from the system to the surroundings or the other way around the total amount of energy that a system has is called the internal energy now we will never know the true internal energy of a system it's just too complicated there's too many different types of energy there's uh, electrical energy nuclear energy and so on so we'll never know the total amount of energy, but what we're interested in, ter in, in thermodynamics is the change. So what we will be able to work out is the change in internal energy. Okay, so I mentioned system there, and there are three types of system that we talk about in thermodynamics. The first one is an open system. This is where matter and energy can transfer with the surroundings. So at the picture there on the left-hand side, you see a beaker there, an open beaker. So heat can pass in and out of this beaker through the walls of the beaker, and matter can pass in and out of this beaker. So you see steam leaving the uh, beaker. A closed system, so the middle flask there is stoppered. So in this case, matter can't leave or enter the system, but energy can transfer. So in other words, heat can leave or enter this flask through the walls of the flask. And an isolated system. In an isolated system, neither energy nor matter can transfer. So in this case, this thermos flask, an ideal thermos flask could be one where heat cannot pass through the walls of the flask. These are called adiabatic walls. Heat can't pass through. This leads us to the first law of thermodynamics. If we think about our thermos flask, if that thermos flask is an ideal thermos flask, the amount of energy in that thermos flask will stay constant because we'll never be able to take heat energy away from the flask or add energy to the flask that the amount of energy that is in the flask is constant. And this is the first law of thermodynamics, which says the internal energy, U, of an isolated system is constant. The amount of energy in that thermos flask is the same. It will never increase or decrease. Now, of course, in the real world, a thermos flask isn't ideal, um, but the point is the same. If we have an isolated system, one where energy can transfer into or out of, the amount of energy that is in the system remains unchanged. It's constant. Put another way, because energy transfers by either heat or work, we can say that the heat or work that enters or leaves a system is equal to the change in internal energy. So you remember we mentioned a minute ago that we'd never know the total internal energy of a system, but we would know the change. So we can say that the change in internal energy, given the symbol delta U, is equal to the amount of heat that enters or leaves a system, plus the amount of work that enters or leaves a system. And this is the mathematical expression of the first law of thermodynamics. Now we need a sign convention. So what we say is if 
heat or work leaves the system, so that's the top two squares, the amount of energy decreases. So they're given a negative sign. If heat or work enters the system, the bottom two squares, they're given a positive sign. So therefore, if we have a, a reaction where, for example, it's an exothermic reaction, heat is given off, we'd give those um, energy values negative signs because heat will be leaving the system. So, the first law is combined, it combines both heat and work. So over the course of the next two lectures we're going to be looking at heat and work. And in this lecture we're going to look at work and then the next two lectures we're going to look at heat, a much more important concept for chemists. Okay, this diagram is trying to show how energy can be transferred as heat. So if you think you might be holding a hot flask in your hand, what's happening? How is heat being transferred from the flask to your hand? Well, what's happening is in the system, the flask, the blue square on your, on your picture there, the molecules have a high kinetic energy because they are hot. So they're bouncing around, they're bouncing against the walls of the flask. So as they bounce against the walls of the flask, they pass some energy through to the walls of the flask and that energy then passes into your hand and it increases the molecular vibrations in your hand. So therefore the heat, the temperature uh, of your hand increases. So heat is a transfer of energy due to a temperature difference. So the molecules in the hot region of the system have a higher kinetic energy and they pass this energy to the surroundings. Now this is a totally random um, energy transfer due to random motion. In other words, there's no direction behind the um, motion of the molecules. As we'll see, um, there's a difference with heat in this case, with, with work in this case. Heat, as we'll see later on, is given the symbol Q. Work, on the other hand, is the transfer of energy due to a uniform motion. So, for example, we may have a flask that has a piston attached, and that piston may be connected to the flask may contain, for example, some, some substance, potassium perchlorate in this case, that gives off a gas that decomposes. Well, as that gives off a gas, all those molecules are going to line up and push against the piston. That energy loss from the system, in other words, the work being done, is um, the uniform motion of all those molecules lining up and uh, leaving the system. So this is a uniform motion. Work is a transfer of energy by causing motion against an opposing force. A gas confined, such as the gas in this cylinder, exerts a pressure on the surfaces that confine it. Pressure is a measure of the force exerted on a unit area. The pressure confining the gas in the cylinder is measured by the force on the piston per unit area. When a gas expands, it does work against the surroundings. In this case, the gas does work by lifting the piston. The work done is given by the force exerted times the distance over which the force operates. In the expansion of the gas, the force is exerted over the distance shown as delta H. The work done is given by the product of the volume change times the pressure. The pressure might be kept constant in such an expansion by heating the gas continuously as it expands. If the pressure is not constant, the formula is still correct, but pressure must be evaluated at each stage of the expansion. In chemistry, the work we care about, there are lots of different types of work, but the work we care about is usually because of expansion. In other words, a reaction is going to give off gas or we're going to compress a reaction mixture to make it proceed. From the video, you'll have seen that the amount of work done depends on the change in volume and we can, we can quantify the work done by any um, process as being the product of the external pressure times the change in volume. In other words, how, how, what pressure does it have to push against multiplied by the change in volume? So work is given the units joules, the SI units. PEXT is the external pressure given the SI units pascals. Okay, so this is the pressure that the gas has to push against. So obviously the larger that pressure is, the more work is going to be done in a gas expanding against it. Delta V is the change in volume. Now this has units meters cubed, which are the SI units. Obviously as chemists we often work in decimeters cubed. 
so you should remember that there are 1000 decimeters cubed in a meters cubed. You'll see here there's a minus sign as well and that's because if the delta V value is positive that means the gas is expanding, work energy is leaving the system. And if you remember our sign convention we said that if energy is leaving the system it has a negative sign. Just a few quick notes on units before we go on to some questions. Pressure is normally given in atmospheres. Okay, so normal atmospheric pressure is about one atmosphere. Now in SI units, one atmosphere is 101 by 10 to the power of 3 pascals. Volume, as we mentioned, is normally given in litres or decimeters cubed. And uh, one decimeters cubed is equal to 1 by 10 to the power of minus 3 metres cubed. Or there are 1,000 decimeters cubed in a metres cubed. So you need to remember those conversions for the questions we're going to look at. Okay, so in this video resource, I'm going to work through two sample questions. So you should have a look at these, see how I do them. And then there are two similar questions on the worksheet um, uh, in, your, in the web courses area for this lecture. So when you're trying these questions on your own, the two that are on the worksheet, have a look uh, as you go through them, see what's causing any difficulty. And that's what we'll discuss in the lecture next week. And everything, all the resources for this uh, lecture are available in the same area on web courses. Okay, so the first question asks us to calculate the work done when a reaction gives off a volume of gas equal to 1.2 litres against a pressure of 1.2 atmospheres. This is a very straightforward question. We literally have our formula, uh, work is equal to minus P delta V. So delta V tells us it's 1.2 litres. We need to turn that into SI units. So 1.2 litres is 1.2 decimeters cubed. And we said that 1 decimeters cubed is 1 by 10 to the minus 3 metres cubed. So I include that conversion factor. So delta V in SI units is 1.2 by 10 to the minus 3 meters cubed. The external pressure is 1.2 atmospheres, so we need to change that into SI units by multiplying by the conversion factor. So that gives me 121,200 pascals. So now I know my um, two parameters that I'm going to put into my work formula, so I can plug them in and I get a value of work of minus 145 and my units are joules because I've been using SI units. We'll just have a check here to make sure we included the minus sign. It says the reaction is giving off a gas, that means energy is leaving the system, so we expect a negative sign. Second question is a little bit harder. It says calculate the work done by a system in which a reaction results in one mole of carbon dioxide at room temperature and atmospheric pressure. So we can um, what we need to do here is use the data we're given to find out the uh, delta V value. So if we remember that the ideal gas law, PV is equal to nRT, well then we can say that for at constant pressure, P delta V is equal to delta nRT. In other words, the change in volume will depend on the change in the number of moles. So we can rearrange this equation to give us delta V. Delta V is equal to del delta nRT over P. So we know everything in this equation. Here I'm assuming room temperature is 20 degrees Celsius, or 293 Kelvin. Pressure is 101 by 10 to the power of 3 pascals, or um, 1 atmosphere pressure. I plug in those numbers, and this gives me a delta V of 2.4 by 10 to the minus 2 meters cubed, because I'm in SI units. It tells me it's atmospheric pressure, that's 1 atmosphere. So therefore I can put in 101 by 10 to the power of 3 pascals in my formula for work and I get a value of work as minus 2424 24 joules. Okay, so on your handout there are two questions very similar to that um, that, you, that you can try. 